Today I am giving you my top tips for screen printing with Icon Earth. We also have all of this information listed on our blog if you prefer to read the information instead of watch a video, so I will have that linked in the description below. Other than that, let's get into it. So when screen printing your own shirts, there's a couple different methods out there. We of course prefer Icon Art. It is super easy to use. You just print off your design, expose your stencil film, and wash out your stencil, and you're able to hold really fine details. You don't have to worry about coating your own screens with emulsion or anything like that. The screens come pre-coated and there is a mesh embedded in it. So the mesh is going to be what holds all of your details in place. We do have two different stencil films. We have a blue stencil film and a purple stencil film. We definitely prefer our purple stencil film for screen printing and we actually developed our purple film specifically to be used on textiles. Of course, it can be used on other surfaces as well, but it works great for screen printing shirts, sweatshirts, tea towels, throw pillows, curtains, custom fabrics, anything like that. So that is what we always use when we screen print. We use our purple film. All right, another thing that I always use every time I screen print is a tacky mat. We do sell these on our website. Basically, you just want something that you can put in your shirt that will hold it in place. So the surface of your tacky mat is a little bit sticky and it really holds your shirt in place while you're screen printing. And it also protects your shirt so that the ink doesn't seep from the front of your shirt onto the back of your shirt. So it really serves two purposes. And I use a tacky mat absolutely every single time I screen print. I've also tested a couple other options. We've uh, used a, I filmed a video where I tested spraying spray adhesive on a mini ironing board. That worked really well. You can use spray adhesive just on a piece of cardboard, uh, but you just want something in your shirt to both hold the fabric in place so it's not moving around on you. And then also to protect your shirt as well. So that is something that I use every single time I screen print. I put a tacky mat in my shirt and I really find that it makes a difference. After I have my tacky mat in the shirt, this next step is optional, but you can use a lint roller and lint roll your shirt to get any of the additional fuzzies off. And each shirt material is gonna be a little bit different, but th this is a blend of cotton and polyester and it's kind of thicker than a normal t-shirt. So just lint rolling a little bit can help um, to prep your shirt surface. All right, so then we're ready to apply our stencil. And of course you can just eyeball it and guesstimate where it should go, but if you wanna be a little more exact, you can pick up some of these ruler guides. They're called t-shirt ruler guides and we have the set link that we have linked on our Amazon storefront. They're very inexpensive and they're a great tool if you want to really be exact on your placement. So they come in adult, youth, infant, toddler. Some sets have different necklines for v-necks. This is just obviously a scoop neck um, and which is what I have. So I'm just going to take the toddler one and place it on my shirt. So it really helps you find the exact center. And it also helps with the distance from the top. It kind of gives you um, a general idea of how far down to go as well. So then I'll just take my stencil and apply it to my shirt using that guide. And we like to use the purple film because it has a stronger adhesive than the blue stencil film, but it also is sturdier, so it doesn't buckle as easy as the blue film, which I really like for textiles. It works really well. So now that you have our stencil on, it's time to apply the ink. So we always use a fabric ink when screen printing. You'll usually see us using speedball fabric ink. I really like how this applies and how it washes over time. You just apply it, dry it, heat set it, and then it can be washed in the um, like normal wash. I just really like how Speedball works, but there's lots of different options out there. If you go to your local hobby shop and to the paint section, you'll see different options for fa fabric inks. I know that Tulip makes a fabric ink, Jacquard, um, those are some of the main ones used, but there's other brands at the craft store too. You just wanna make sure it says for fabric on the container. <clears throat> 
And then squeegee. So our regular Icon Art Kit comes with the white hard plastic squeegee. This is great for hard surfaces like flat glass or uh, flat chalkboards. But for fabric, I really like to use our silicone squeegee. We sell these individually on our website. You can also get these in the textile add-on bundle that we sell. So in the textile add-on bundle, you would get a screen printing ink, tacky mat, purple film, and then this squeegee. So those are four items that I use absolutely every single time I screen print. So that textile add-on bundle is really a great bundle to if you're interested in doing a lot of fabric or a lot of shirts but I really prefer the black silicone squeegee when I am stenciling. All right, so today for this shirt, I'm gonna be using Speedball's opaque ink, and the reason I'm using this one is because the opaque inks have a little bit of a, like, not sparkle, but a little bit of a pearlescent kind of look, and I thought that would be really cute on this shirt, and the raspberry color is a really pretty kind of darkish pink color. So I thought that would look really nice on this pink shirt. So all I do when I'm screen printing, you really wanna pay attention to your screen printing pressure. You don't wanna be pushing too hard where you're making the ink go underneath the stencil, but you don't, you know, you still need to get it in all the mesh. So I like to just kind of glide across, think of it almost like buttering bread and just make sure you get in all of those openings. And then I like to just kind of go over, you don't want to go over too many times, and I like to always go in the same direction. And then I just go over at the end to get rid of all of my squeegee lines and make sure none of those are there. And I also forgot to mention that I like to add, keep a border around my stencil that's big enough to accommodate me just stenciling. But if your design is close to your edge, you can use something like painter's tape or masking tape to tape off your stencil. And then um, you don't have to worry about your ink going off the edge of your stencil. So when I'm removing my stencil, I use, what's, I use what's called the lift and look method. I lift nice and slow just to make sure that I got the ink in all of my openings and there's no spots missing. If there would be somewhere that I didn't get ink, I would lay my stencil back down right away and add ink before I remove the stencil completely. It just makes it a lot easier to line it back up and make sure you're getting the ink in the exact spot. So that looks really good and I love it. <laughs> All right, so then of course the stencils are reusable. The Speedball ink wash washes off really nicely off of our stencil film. So I usually just go wash this off right away. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. All right, and let's just make sure I don't <laughs> get any paint on this or I don't want it. But then I'll just take my Stencil, lay it upside down, and add my backer back to my stencil. And then it can be reused, no problem. So <clears throat> if you would want to make multiple shirts in a row without washing out your stencil, you can do that as well. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can <clears throat> just to do exactly what I just did and then move from shirt to shirt just with your regular uh, or just with your stencil. You don't need to really do anything different. I like to have all my shirts prepped. So I have like a stack of tacky mats. So if I'm gonna do 10 shirts in a row, I would prep them all with a tacky mat first. Uh, also the uh, using that iron board method worked really well for doing multiples in a row if you don't have a lot of tacky mats. But you can just literally take your stencil Remove it, move this shirt out of the way, put your next shirt here and do it. That's one option. You can also use a screen printing frame and there's two different ways to do that. Our blue film is thin enough that you can mount it directly into a speedball frame and then screen print with it that way. Or you can take the purple film and just cut it to size. You can just tape it to the mesh that comes in this screen printing frame and do it that way. 
Uh, some people like when they are using the frame method to get a bigger squeegee. That way you can flood your design with the whole squeegee at once. This is gonna be more like traditional screen printing, but it works really good. So that's two different ways to use your frame. And then it makes it really easy to just go from one shirt to the next as well. So two options for that. And I'll link all the videos below where I show doing <laughs> exactly what I just described. Another question we get quite a bit is how to do multiple colors. So there's a couple different ways to do multiple colors, to screen print multiple colors with Icon Art. You can keep all of your colors on one stencil and then just use a squeegee and kind of do parts of your stencil like that. You can split up your artwork onto multiple stencils and then just do your first color, dry that or let that dry, put your second color on and screen print that. That's another way to do it. Uh, you want your first design to be completely dry if you're gonna do that, and you do not wanna move your shirt off of the tacky mat in between. You want to make sure your design does not shift at all if you're trying to line up two colors with each other. So that's just a tip that I see some people do. They'll do their first color, take the tacky mat off, maybe dry their shirt with a dryer, or hair dryer or something, and then try to line up the second color. Well, that design is gonna shift, so it's gonna be really difficult to line up the second color if you move the shirt at all. So just keep it on the tacky mat and you can use a hair dryer on really low heat to speed up the drying time. Another tip is to use registration marks. If it's really important that your two colors line up exactly, you can use registration marks in order to do that. And we also have a blog post with four different ways to register multiple colors with Icon Art and a link to videos showing each process. So I'll make sure to link that below as well. <laughs> All right, and finally, after your design is dry, you're definitely gonna want to heat set it. You just take a little bit of parchment paper and heat set the ink with a regular household iron, and then it is ready to be washed. So those are my main tips when screen printing shirts, sweatshirts, or any kind of fabric with Icon Art. If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out this video here where I show you how to use registration marks to line up two different colors. My name is Fawn and I share tips and tricks on how to make icon art stencils and use them. So if you're interested in more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we upload.